Alrighty, here we go. Hey everybody, Dylan here. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I got a comment on YouTube on my most recent Sigma FP color grading video the other day, and they're basically asking me to go into a little bit more detail into the beginning process of working with, offloading, ingesting Sigma FP footage. So I thought I'd make a quick video for today doing just that. Today I want to talk to you about how I offload my Sigma FP footage from my editing drive using the program called Slim Raw. That's what I use to compress those raw Cinema DNG files coming out of the Sigma FP. Then I'm going to show you how to turn that raw Cinema DNG footage, all those individual raw DNG image files into one standalone video clip. And then finally, I'm going to take you through some of the standard project settings I apply whenever I'm working on Sigma FP projects. It just helps me uh, edit Sigma FP footage a little faster and is basically the way I like to set up my project every time. If that sounds of interest to you, then uh, stick around, follow along. Hopefully you'll learn something. But hey, first, if you like me, if you like this channel, if you like the content I'm putting out on here, consider subscribing and definitely turn on that notification bell so you never miss a video. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get into it. To follow along with me in today's video, you're going to need three things. The first of which is some Sigma FP footage. I have my Sigma FP footage right here on a Samsung T5 one terabyte solid state hard drive. It's what I shoot all of my Sigma FP footage to externally whenever I'm using it. If you don't have access to Sigma FP footage of your own, I'll put a link up here to a previous video where I uh, actually provided some free sample clips. Download those. You can follow along with me as we compress and ingest. Next, you're going to need a copy of the program SlimRaw. SlimRaw is a program I use to compress the raw Cinema DNG files coming out of the Sigma FP. It helps manage those uh, massive file sizes a lot. It's not free, unfortunately. It's around $65. It is worth the money, especially if you're planning to shoot and use the Sigma FP a lot. Those file sizes can add up. The third thing you're going to need is a copy of DaVinci Resolve. I don't know of any other program that you can edit Cinema DNG files natively in. I know you can't do it in Adobe Premiere. I do not believe you can do it in Final Cut. So we are gonna be using DaVinci Resolve for today's purposes. I'm working with the studio version, the paid version, but I don't believe you need that. You can download a free version of the software from the Blackmagic Design website. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you have all three of those things, you're ready to follow along and we're ready to go. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is load up our Sigma FP footage. So we're gonna plug in our Samsung T5 drive via USB-C, wait for that to come up. Once it does, we'll click in, and on the root of the drive, we see a folder labeled Cinema. That's where our Sigma FP footage is contained. And in that folder, we'll see a bunch of different folders, each of them representing a different Sigma FP clip. In each folder, we also see a whole host of raw DNG image files. Each one of these DNG image files represents a single frame of video. Add all those single frames of video up, and you've got yourself a Sigma FP video clip. Obviously, our goal when we get to the finishing step of the process will be to turn all these multiple DNG raw image files into a single standalone video clip that is ready for editing in DaVinci Resolve. But for now, um, let's focus on compressing these uh, Sigma FP clips before we take them off the shooting drive and put them on my computer using the program SlimRaw. So if I highlight this uh, cinema folder, which contains all the footage, hit Command I uh, so we get our information. We can see that uh, all the Sigma FP footage is about 155 gigabytes. And we're gonna wanna reduce that file size greatly using SlimRaw. So I'm gonna come down here, select SlimRaw. Program opens very quickly. And the first thing you'll see when the program opens is this main program window here. Uh, we have some source and destination folder options to choose here on the left, and then some compression settings here on the right, which we'll get to in a minute. The first thing we'll do is choose our source folder by hitting this button up here. And then we're gonna wanna make sure that we've got our shoot drive selected and our entire folder containing all our Sigma FP footage selected as well. We wanna compress everything inside there. So we're just gonna hit open on that folder. And then next we're gonna select a destination by clicking on this button here. And for the purpose of this test, I'm just gonna create a folder on the desktop and label that compressed Sigma FP footage like so. I'm gonna hit open. After our source and destination folders are selected, we come over here to the right and you'll see a bunch of compression settings. I don't actually ever change um, any of these settings. I leave my compression load as lossless. I leave all these check boxes here on the right unchanged. And I also leave Premiere CC compatibility checked. I'm not sure what that does. As I said before, as far as I know, you can't edit Cinema DNG files natively in Adobe Premiere. If anybody knows any different, let me know. Also, if anybody knows what this checkbox actually does to your files, that would be interesting to know as well. But, you know, I leave everything there as is. And once you have everything set, the only thing left to do is to click Start Job. And we'll go ahead and do that. And then our job will 
begin. So we see our files process number going up there, the time is elapsing. And so we'll come back in a few minutes when the job is finished and we'll see what we've got. 11 minutes later. All right, the compression is done. So we see here with the results that we've shrunk our total file size from 154.6 gigabytes to 66.47 gigabytes. That's pretty good. That's a little less than a third. Now that our footage compression is done, uh, the next step is to ingest those resulting files into DaVinci Resolve. Once DaVinci Resolve opens up, we see our project window here. We're gonna create a new project. I'm gonna title this Sigma FP Ingest. Just create. So once we're inside the project, by default, it'll take you to the cut page. At least it does for me anyway. I like to ingest media on the media page, so I'm gonna switch over to the media page by hitting Shift 2. Uh, that's the shortcut for it, but you can also navigate to the media page just by clicking on the word media all the way to the left at the bottom of the window here. And then once we're on the media page, we see our file directory up here. And we're gonna to wanna to navigate to the location of the folder that we created uh, for our compressed Sigma FP footage. So I created my folder on the desktop, so I'm gonna to go to Macintosh HD, uh, go to users, myself, desktop, and then we see our folder name here, compressed Sigma FP footage. I'm gonna click into that folder and we see all of those individual clip folders like we saw in Finder. Inside of those are all our individual raw DNG image files. But to turn them into individual video clips, all we have to do is highlight all these folders and then drag into our media pool. It's gonna ask us if we wanna change the project frame rate, which we do. We want our project frame rate to be the same as that of the footage we're importing. So we're gonna hit change and then we'll see all our clips pop up. And it's that simple. It's turned all of our individual DNG raw image files in each of those clip folders into standalone video clips. And we can take all of these clips and create a timeline with them by highlighting them all, right clicking and selecting create new timeline using selected clips up at the top here. I'm gonna label this Sigma FP assembly. I'm gonna make sure use project settings is checked and hit create. And then our timeline will pop up here. Double click on that timeline to automatically bring you over to the edit page and our footage is ready to edit. That's all there is for ingest. The last thing I'm gonna show you um, is my project settings for all of my Sigma FP projects. I'm gonna bring up my project settings window by hitting shift nine. And the first thing I'm gonna ensure is that my timeline resolution is not 4K. We're working with 4K footage, but in order to speed up uh, DaVinci Resolve, I'm working on a 2019 MacBook Pro. Uh, this is pre-M1, so I have a pretty great graphics card, but it's still not as fast as an M1, and it sometimes chugs when I try to edit natively in 4K. So I do switch my timeline resolution while I organize and edit to 1920 by 1080. I switch it back to 3840 by 2160 4K UHD right before export, but in order to speed up the editing process, I keep it at 1920 by 1080. And then down here at the bottom, I'll switch my render cache format to ProRes 422LT. That is something I do switch back to 422 before I export. This render cache format is how your files will render for export. So it's always, um, you always wanna make sure that that's at a quality you can be happy with. For now, the same reason I switched to 1920 by 1080, I'm gonna switch that to Pro ProRes 422LT to speed up my editing process. That's all I'll switch on this master settings tab. The next thing I'll do is hop over to the camera raw tab and set up my Cinema DNG raw uh, profile. So to do that, I'm gonna switch raw profile over to Cinema DNG, select decode using project. Down here under color space, I'm gonna switch it from Rec. 709 to Blackmagic Design uh, and make sure that my camera is set on Blackmagic Design film. And then I'm gonna check the highlight recovery box. I'm gonna drag my highlights from my Cinema DNG footage all the way down uh, to negative 100. And then I'm also, as a final step, going to increase the exposure of all of my Cinema DNG files by two stops. The reason I do that is because the Sigma FP is actually not that great at retaining detail and highlights. It's really easy uh, to blow your highlights when capturing raw video. I always underexpose by about two stops. I've had great results in bringing detail back in shadows. If you're interested in learning more about the way I shoot with the Sigma FP, how I expose it, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'll make a video about it, but I always um, increase the exposure of all my Sigma FP clips by two stops across the board. And that's the last thing I'll change. I'll hit save here and you see the exposure of the Sigma FP clip jump up instantly. And as I drag through, uh, they're all kind of nominally exposed now. Um, I will have to go back and make a few adjustments here and there, but for the most part, I'm set up and ready to go. 
Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It helps out my channel a lot. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos like this on video editing, post-production workflows, cinematography, and color grading. Once again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Dylan, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.